Welcome back, folks. We're here. The Field of 68's Best Bets show. Three Man Weaves here to host. We're presented by Bet Rivers. A little bit of a two-day break there. Kind of an ugly schedule yesterday with the college football championship taking the big headlines in college sports. But Kai, they gave us some good games today. No extra board, no beating around the bush, just a lot of good headliners. But before we get to those, any takeaways for you from yesterday or even going all the way back to Saturday or Sunday, given that we've been off? I got a, t- a couple takeaways here, Jim. How about Iowa? Wow. Hey. Winning at the rack outright against Rutgers, a lesson learned in overreaction, perhaps, maybe. Maybe in all seriousness, a, a crazy good win for them it will be interesting to see how their season plays out going forward. The unpredictableness of Saturday was uh, turned up to 11. I would say some really weird results, Matt, including Wazoo quietly beating Arizona at Arizona. No one told uh, me one that went under yeah. my radar for sure. And then just one, of course, many of weird results that we saw on Saturday and Sunday. Yep, it's a good team. It's a team I gave up on too soon and has uh, cost me money accordingly, which is a a very common story that's emerged this year, Kai. I'll throw it over to Jim real quick for a takeaway slash question. Who's the better team in Iowa, Iowa State or Iowa? Uh, I think it's Iowa State. Um, Just been more impressed with them lately. Iowa's had so many ups and downs. Remember, Iowa lost Eastern Illinois. Like That that just has to stick in your head, like the quad five loss that they took Mm -hmm. there. Um, But Iowa State impressive and somebody chris g mentioned in the chat road teams in the big 12 5 and 0 on saturday one of the leagues that we respect home court the most that was rather shocking Uh, we're going to talk a lot of big 12 after the first chat mob break that'll be second half of the show so maybe we'll just completely discount home uh my quick takeaway was just mid-major mayhem Uh, some powerhouses lost vermont lost to new hampshire for the first time since 2015 they had won (laughs) 15 straight against new hampshire lost on the road there uh, Bryant also went down in that league. UMass Lowell got blown out by Albany. Those were supposed to be the powerhouses. Liberty, the ASUN powerhouse, lose to Eastern Kentucky. Texas Southern's 0-4 in the SWAC. There's a lot of craziness going on right now. It's tough to track, but we're doing our best. Uh, all right, let's get into the outline, though. We're starting in the ACC. Matthew, your boys, the Tar Heels, I know you're just a huge diehard fan, lifelong. They are headed to Virginia. Virginia laying 4.5 at Bet Rivers. I just got to say this right off the bat, Matthew. Virginia is one and nine against the spread in their last ten games. Only wow. cover was home against Georgia Tech. They have really struggled since the Vegas opening performance, and they were overinflated in some of the preseason analytical rankings that I think boosted their lines. Are you buying? Or I guess I'll word this differently. Do you agree that Virginia is still overvalued, and we should be selling them? A little bit, yeah. Like you look at that MTE in Vegas, Baylor, Illinois, Virginia. Three of those teams have. Uh, you know, if you shorted those stocks after that MTE, you 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 may not like bandits where UCLA, yeah. the fourth team, has really skyrocketed. And UCLA so, went 0-2 there, the only one. And 0-2, exactly. <laughs> so it's just been a complete change of direction for both teams. Um, yeah, I still have questions about Virginia's offense. Like a lot of the same stuff that emerged last year hasn't been solved this year from what I watch at least. I think they're better this season. There's no question about that. But uh, against a North Carolina team that's basically the same – well, sorry, mostly the same nucleus that destroyed them twice last season. Graham, not at John Paul Jones. Uh, George, run a show here. Come on, act professional. Um, <laughs> I hard lean UNC. I think the number's way too high. Four and a half, I think it should be closer to three. Wanted to take UNC money line. If it gets to five, I might take it with the spread. I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of a mm-hmm. dolt if I fade Tony Bennett at home in a fairly desperate spot, right? Oh, Hubert's 2-0 and against Tony Bennett. Uh, surely that can't last very long. I, I would assume it wouldn't. The the coaching edge, in my opinion, is pretty stark. Uh, it's also tough to beat a really disciplined team like Virginia when you're a really undisciplined team. Like this version of Virginia can absolutely take advantage of, of this UNC team. Unlike last year when we saw Virginia kind of struggle for the entire year, they're going to entice the UNC guards to take really bad shots all game. And if they're missing, I think they walk away with this game pretty easily. Also, Shedrick, plus him plus the pack line, it's pretty good defense against Armando Baycott. Their, their offense is solid enough to score, assuming we have a fully healthy Beekman. I actually lean towards UNC, uh, UVA here, Jim. Yep, I do too, actually. I, I just I think that matchup angle you uh, highlighted is huge. Like UNC's whole thing is they don't guard off the ball. They're lazy. They don't like getting around screens. And they're mm-hmm. going to have to do that for 25 seconds every time against a team that runs maybe the, you know some of the crispest motion in, in the country. I, I just see Caleb Love's guy getting open shots time after time after time. Mm-hmm. 
Shedrick's emergence as like a true rim protector, dominant rebounder, gives them at least uh, some battle with Baycott inside, and they do have Cafaro as a second body if you need one. Like they've got guys to throw at him. I think the matchup sets up pretty well for Virginia here, despite that they're uh, you know kind of low lately. Also, if you go through North Carolina when they play slower games, just not as good. They they, they are better when they get to run and kind of be free flowing and get offense that way. They're not a half court execution team, and Virginia is going to drag them into that. So I I do lean towards the Cavs. Tony Betty getting his first W against Hubert Davis. We'll see though. Elusive, yeah, the, that elusive win. All right, we'll go Big Ten now. My Badgers, Wisconsin. Uh, now a home dog. There's been some movement on this line. <laughs> Michigan State laying one in the Kohl Center. Kai has certainly a lot to do with Tyler Wall. Yes. I've got the efficiency splits. I'll hold those for uh, for now. But he's very, very important to this handicap, yes? Oh, yeah, he is the handicap. Market seems to think he's out. Even the opening was pretty low, in my opinion. Uh, if he's out, clearly massively important. I think the spread makes a bit of sense if that's the case. But if he's in, spread's nuts. Badgers should never be a dog at home in this situation if fully healthy. He is probably worth five or six points to the line. So again, where it's at right now, assuming he's out, you kind of see how that how that's the case, Matt. The Badgers hung with Illinois. They ultimately tailed off. They didn't hit free throws. Illinois got white hot. Tyler Wall is obviously their best player on both ends of the floor. It, they they couldn't quite get it done against Illinois. I think they can hang around with Sparty if he's out, but I would not be backing them, Matt. Um, Sparty's been rolling right now without, excuse me, with Malik Hall back in the lineup. It's not really a team I'm looking to fade right now. So it's definitely wall predicated. If he's in, I'm leaning Badgers. If he's out, probably lean Sparty, probably stay away. Yeah, Malik Hall back is huge, but AJ Hogar playing well is even more important. Like the whole question mark with Michigan State this season, I guess they had two, was, you know, who is their interior enforcer? Can they find a rim protector? And, you know, unsurprisingly, Izzo's kind of cobbled together, a, a, you know, a group up there. So I think they're fine. We shouldn't have doubted that. I think we were right to doubt the point guard play. Um, and maybe we're still right to doubt it, but as of now, Hogarth's playing tremendously. Over his last, what, four games, he has 25, pardon me, 33 assists to six turnovers. Um, and he scored them all pretty efficiently, getting them out in transition when they need to. I just think Michigan State's kind of a very, very covertly under the radar by a little right now. Not like a ton of upside to like be an elite team, um, but just with the way they're playing as a connected unit. And against Wisconsin, who even if they were to get it all back tonight, um, does he integrate seamlessly? I still think there's other issues on this team. I'll continue to beat the drum of Wisconsin is a little bit overrated, um, but I'm definitely not going to back a road favorite Sparty team at the Cole Center. I just can't get behind that. Yeah, it, even if Wall plays, he's not going to be full strength. Like he hasn't practiced at all. So it would just be like, all right, man, hope you feel good enough. And I could see him maybe good early with the adrenaline and I'm sure they'll you know, shoot some cortisone into him or something and he'll feel great. But then as time goes, I would think his effectiveness will wear down. And yeah, Sparty's been so much better with Malik Hall in the lineup. They're three and zero against the spread since he returned. We know they were really, really solid to start the year with their their grueling gauntlet to start the season. I think they are just a different team with him in there. They've got a lot more lineup optionality. They can go small ball or play the Sissoko big lineup. You get less Jackson Kohler minutes now that Malik Hall is back. I think that is good for Sparty. Uh, so I kind of lean towards uh, Spartans on the road here if Wall is out. If he's in there kind of ham- hampered running around, it's just I'm going to sit out and, and not get against the uh, the Cole Center juju. Uh, all right, next up, Auburn at Mississippi. Going to the SEC, Auburn, another very short road favorite. That will be a theme of the first half of this mm-hmm. outline. Auburn minus one and a half. Matthew going to Ole Miss. I don't really trust Auburn as a road favorite right now. Look what they did at Georgia. What do you think? I'm just not checking the updated number. It got bet up to Florida – Minus two. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Auburn. They just played Florida. That's why I'm looking at the wrong game, Jim. I I apologize. Uh, I don't know. Auburn, just a team I don't really want to back. But I mean, Kyle Ole Miss is probably in worse form than Auburn right now, all things considered. Like, part of me looks at that Tennessee first 25 minutes, like, wow, really inspiring effort from Landshark. Like, they can kind of defend. They can be feisty at the rim when they need to be. Um, but the offense really can hit some. Um, some dry spells, and it did it against Tennessee, as it, you know, as we expect, and against this Auburn defense that can protect the rim. Um, no doubt about that. That I, I worry about them scoring here as well. A lot of conflicting factors here. I do lean Ole Miss. I think it's. Uh, I thought the opener was a little bit high. I think the money's on the right side here, bringing it down to Auburn minus one and a half from Auburn minus three. 
but again, in no race, in no rush to go back uh land shark right now. Yeah, Auburn on the road is is very, very different uh than Auburn at home. Um lost to Georgia by 12 on the road, and then a couple of days later they beat Arkansas by 13. It's a really weird team to to try to peg. I think the home and road splits kind of is how you do it. In which case, I'm not really looking to back Auburn here, Jim. Am I looking to back Ole Miss? They're winless in SEC play. Maybe a little bit of an advantage there. And their only home game they played looked pretty good against Tennessee. Uh, I think they're capable of winning this game. I'm not super confident in this one, Jim. Yeah, I don't I don't have a, a good read on either one of these teams. Ole Miss especially. Uh, just that offense is so streaky. Like even the Tennessee game within it, they scored a bunch like 28 early and then they scored I think like 24 the rest of the game or something. Like they just really can tail off and go through monster droughts and against a team that takes away easy baskets like Auburn that's concerning so as much as I want to fade Auburn here uh fade road Auburn I don't know if Ole Miss is the team to do it uh, I would like to get more points than just one and a half like you have to win outright uh so I'm gonna I'm gonna sit that one out I, I will I will sit that out oh and to mention yes Dacian Ruffin has played eight straight games he has he has Played double digit minutes in all of them. I don't know what to say, Scott. Like, look at the box scores, game logs. He's in all of them. He's not healthy. Clearly, something's up there. Kai, you talked about this, well, right? He's yeah. on the court and he's, he's on he the hasn't court. Played, so I don't know. He's like, he's he has been he's invisible. He has basically <laughs> yeah. been invisible. I'll give him that. Well, he's uh, changed his role. He comes off the bench now. That's his yep. role. Yep. Because he, he doesn't have the same explosion. You watch and you can just tell it's not the same thing. Uh, I but like what, man, they're, they're coming off a defense gauntlet. You play Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi State's defenses in a row. Like maybe you're prepared for a defense that can kind of get lackadaisical on the road. We'll see. All right. The other SEC game that Matt was anxious to talk about Florida on the road at LSU. Man, Kai, I don't know about the Florida team, a team that we were high on early in the season, but they've played eight top 100 games. They are one and seven <laughs> oh, against gosh. the spread in those games, one and seven outright. They just don't seem to have another gear offensively against quality competition. I don't love LSU that much this year either, but at home, I think they're backable. They were able to beat Arkansas at home. I'm leaning towards the Tigers here. Am I crazy? No, I don't really have a good side on this one. It's 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 put up or shut up time for Florida, Matt, is what I will say. Like Jim said, like zero good wins. They need this game to stay near 500 in the SEC, pick up a road victory. LSU's dropped two straight. A very disappointing road effort against a and I was on LSU in that game. I was very disappointed to see them not cover or even get close against a banged-up a and team. There's not much to this handicap. I think there's two pretty evenly matched teams here. I think there's maybe a sense that LSU has the numer- numerical advantage, if you think they're even, and I kind of think they do, and they're a two-point dog right now to a Florida team I don't really trust. I guess I lean sort of LSU on the number here, Matt, but my gut did lean Florida initially, so I stayed away. Hey, well, that's for my gut. Uh, that's for my gut was investing. I took Florida at plus one. I was reading the uh, the, the board one. Uh, hey, George, still doing a show here, big guy. We're very live here. Um, but I think Florida's the right side. I do. LSU at home doesn't scare me. I know they play Arkansas close. They play Arkansas close because they zoned Arkansas. Arkansas can't solve a zone. Florida's not a good shooting team, but I don't think yeah. Florida is going to have the same issues Arkansas had against the zone. I think Todd Golden will at least have a better plan than I think Musselman came in sort of off, kind of caught off guard by that. And that really like swung the pendulum in LSU's favor. Every other game besides the Arkansas game, what's LSU done? It's been impressive. It's been basically nothing. So not scared of, or not scared of LSU at all at home. Uh, I am very aware that I'm probably stubbornly back in Florida too late in the year when we've seen plenty of evidence that they're just not that good. But here I am taking them plus one. Hey, LSU almost won at Kentucky. Eh, that's not impressive. They almost beat Kansas impressive. State on a neutral floor. That has aged really, really well. Yeah, um, Kansas State's weird. LSU's <laughs> solid. You just hate Kansas State. My God. They're weird. Um, Florida, yeah, Butler, just, Butler I, wax K State just for the record. Butler handled K State. We need to think about that, guys. Uh, Florida it has had no offensive plan all year, Matt. Unfortunately, so I don't really trust them to come in and have an offensive plan against changing defenses. They've looked really bad. They just look lost for extended stretches. Pretty much every game offensively, they don't have a lot of talent offensively. Frankly, Castleton's a great piece inside, but like Lofton is more of a gamer manager at the point guard spot. The wing talent isn't like. You know, pop, popping off the page with shooting ability. Bonham's the only guy that can get in the lane consistently, and he's 5'10", struggles to finish against SEC size. I just don't really trust them right now. Uh, should mention rematch from the NCAA tournament last mm-hmm. year. Todd Golden, Matt McMahon, both promoted after that really wild 7-10 game. I'm sure there's a little revenge on the mind of the yes. Florida staff there yes. after they, they went down there. But 
uh, I'm just not sure they're capable of getting that revenge. And I don't, I don't think the players are as motivated. So we'll see. Yeah. Players don't care. It's a good point. Yep. All right. Let's get to the first chat mob section. Kai, you are my czar today. What do you got for us? Yes. A fantastic game that didn't make the rundown in the Mac guys. Lots of questions on Toledo. Kent state. This one did get down to like three, three and a half. Now it's back at the four bet rivers in favor of Kent state. Matt, do you have a side in this one? You know, I like Toledo. I think I said in our group chat a few weeks ago, I still think Toledo is the better team than Kent State. I have revised that take to now that they're basically equals. And so look at the current line, Kai. Kent State minus four implies that the market sees them at about the same. Kent State's been awesome, but look at their last few games. Um, Not as dominant, perhaps bored, perhaps looking ahead to this um, marquee showdown with Toledo team they've dominated uh, or did dominate last year. I like Toledo, though, Jim, with uh, with Mr. Cochran back in the lineup. A little more toughness, a little physicality. I, you were the guy all over last year that this team is way better against Toledo because of the physicality and the, the edge in the paint. So I actually, I like Kent State. I feel like you you had this figured out last year and now you're going away from it. Kent State, I don't think they're as dominant up front this year. They're a little different. A little more pressure focused, not they as like defense. imposing up front. They, they do play, play defense, defense, yeah. They have the same DNA, I guess, but they're not as dominant up front as they were last year. Yeah, fair. That was all right, shot. Jim, for Matthew, we have Utah State and Wyoming. Yes, Wyoming is still missing a lot of guys. The spread, though, is 10 points. It's, it's big. They are missing Noah Reynolds, Brendan Wenzel, Kenny Foster, Graham E.K., Hunter Thompson, five-year eight, probably top eight rotation guys, five-year top nine. They are a complete <clears throat> mash unit. But Utah State's not going to have Ryland Jones. He might. There's a chance he has to medically retire. He's had a lot of concussions, and he looked bad at Boise, like just completely lost. They're saying undisclosed, and I mean, I think we all know what it is. So that takes out a key initiator for that offense. That said, they just missed every shot that was wide open against Boise State. Like it, uh, I watched yes. it. It was ridiculous. They couldn't make a thing. I think they get a much better shooting performance at home against a shorthanded Wyoming team. I would lean towards the Aggies, even at that number. Wyoming stuck with San Diego State. That was surprising. M- yeah, more on them in a bit. Uh, Illinois, Nebraska, Matthew from Ryan A. Nebraska, three and a half point home dogs against the Illini. Who you got? Just, I was going to bet this after the show. I was hoping it would sit at two and a half. I think Illinois is the right side here, up to three and a half. Like, I don't think they're solved or anything, but I think winning at home against Wisconsin, watching that game, they at least seem like connected and like bought in or whatever. The Sky Clark defection, I think, can only be a positive. Um, maybe some internal locker room stuff there. At least we have some, uh, some hearsay on that. And I think they're starting to guard a little better. They're getting, uh, their young guards more reps, tighter rotation. They've struggled in Lincoln historically, but I still think it's the right side. Jim from Ted, Colorado State and Air Force. He asks about the under. Another person asks about the game in general. So what do you think? Um, it made the number about what it is on the side. Nine points, uh, yes. Yeah, Colorado State maybe trending up a little as they get healthier with Lake and Tavi Jackson back in there. But I respect this Air Force team, especially getting close to double digits. I think they're kind of a feisty dog. I know they didn't cover against Utah State at home, but they – Snuck inside the number at San Diego State. They've been solid. They're not going to be worried about elevation. They play at it as well. Uh, total, I actually I usually like Air Force unders, Kai, because of the Princeton and, and the zone, but they don't zone anymore. <laughs> they play switching yeah. man-to-man, and they're not as good at it. Uh, so Weird I, I'm choice. staying away. Yeah. Weird choice by Joe Scott. Um, from Harry and a couple others here, Murray State, Northern Iowa. The spread has not moved, which uh, worries me a little bit because I'm on Murray State plus three and a half. Uh, usually we don't get CLV. It's a bad sign, but yeah, I think Murray can uh, can handle you and I today. That that's my my long and short of it, I suppose. Yeah, Murray coming from Drake Smith, Smith has been back, right? Or he came back. Demar Smith yeah, is I, back from Murray State. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I thought they might be down one more. Whatever. It's a short travel from Drake. I think they play well today. I'm with you, Kai. All right. Yeah, it's you. about it's less than two hour drive from Drake. A little less home, maybe. We'll see. Uh, from Matthew again, Seton Hall in Georgetown. Wow, what a Big East matchup. Bryson Mazzone, Matthew, Brandon Murray, and Jay Heath are three guys that missed last game for Georgetown. Status TBD today. Who do, you, who do you like in this one? Nine, ten point spread. I've been liking Seton Hall too much this year, but I somehow like Georgetown here. What would, what did Georgetown close at home against Xavier like two weeks ago? Like around 10, right? Yeah. It's yeah, close. But if all I mean, those guys are gone, you can't bet Georgetown. Yeah, I don't know. I just think Georgetown plays to like the same level regardless of who plays and they typically play up to competition when they do play well. I don't know. I feel like this is a good spot to back Georgetown. That's all I'll say. That's all Georgetown's I'll say. last three lost by 29 to Butler, 16 to Nova, 
22 to Marquette. Like they just haven't been able to play up anymore. Like they, I think it's that's they're up at insane. half against Marquette. I don't know. They've shown signs, but you're right. It's a full 40 they, minutes in Georgetown can off. give up a 14 up, maybe first half Georgetown. That's my revised take. Yeah. I think they were like tied with Villanova at halftime too. They've been really bad in second half lately. Brandon Murray's really, really good. That's what I, I don't think you can bet them without him. Uh, last one. Then we'll go back to the rundown. Tennessee, Jim and Vanderbilt from Luke. This spread is obviously huge. I think it's uh, 18 points at Bet Rivers. Anything there? I actually lean towards Vandy. You know, I, Ooh, I, I think it's too. probably crazy, but it is like an in-state rivalry game. Vandy's been fairly competent lately since they moved Manion, Robbins, and Wright to the bench. Their bench mob. That's like kind of the, the branding they're going with. They've been pretty solid. Uh, maybe should have won at Mizzou, arguably. Uh, they they controlled a lot of uh, parts of that game, especially the first half. Tennessee's awesome, though. So, like, what am I doing re- recommending fading? Yes. Tennessee might be the best team in college basketball. We'll talk about that later. So, Will we? When we talk Will about we? that? No. Uh, I might bring it up okay. as I handicap another uh, chat mob question here as okay. a tangent. Uh, I'll, I'll all talk right. about it. We'll, we'll go back to the rundown, then I have more more chat questions after this. All right, Big 12 time. We're talking Big 12. There's only three tonight. I was hoping I could fill a whole section with four Big 12 games, but start with Matt's favorite Purple Wildcats. Oklahoma State at Kansas State. K-State laying five and a half here. Uh, Musa Cisse's status is huge for Oklahoma State. They have like a 15 point per 100 possession gap when he plays versus when he doesn't. He is completely game time decision. He dressed last game but did not warm up or play. Matthew, is that the swing factor for you on a yes. handicap, or are you just already like screw K State? You're fading them because you're psycho. <laughs> no, I actually almost back K State here. I think Oklahoma State's terrible without C State. Like, I mean, I know they competed with Texas, but I thought Texas helped them stay in that game. They were completely inept on offense, and as important as C State is on defense, and he's instrumental defensively. I actually think he's a big offensive uh, boost as yeah, well because like lob threat as, dunk stuff. Yeah. Like lob threat dunk. He helps get them easy baskets and easy baskets are hard to come by for a team that cannot <laughs> shoot at all. And it was glaringly apparent against Texas. Uh, against West Virginia was not pretty. And Kansas was just sort of, I think they caught Kansas a little bit sleepy off the break. Um, I actually like K-State. I'm not going to take it at a stale number. That's for sure. But um, I, I do lean their way. Yeah. yeah it's, well, uh, it opened five. It's been five. I thought it's been three and a half. Okay. I'm a little uh, yeah. K-State's definitely exceeded my expectations. Um, I admit they're a very good team. Boom. Done. Five and a half points though. Come on. If C stays in, it can't be five and a half. Just can't. I agree with that though. If, if, if he's point. in, if he's in, it's Oklahoma state for me. Um, they do have ball handling issues. It will be exposed at the octagon of doom, but if he's in five and a half is too much. If he's out, sure. K-State or, or stay away. Oklahoma State's a tough team, man. They're, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country. they are going to make it a war. Um, so I, I would lean their way if Cisse is in, but again, Jim, not stepping in front of the cats if he's out of the game. Yeah. I'm the buyer of K state out of these guys. Like, I think it's real and legit. I watch them and I'm just like, they're super well coached. They know who they are. They know who they're like three miles to feed are. And they get those guys, good shots in good spots. Uh, I make it six with Cisse in. So if he's out, I'll probably jump on the wildcats. If I can get like a good enough number at some point. Well, of course, maybe maybe I'm uh, overvaluing Big 12 home, as we mentioned, Saturday. It was not yeah. super beneficial for the home teams. All right, next up, though, we've got one of the, the best, should be the best, one of the best home courts in the conference. Hilton Magic, Hilton Coliseum, should have students starting to filter back in here. Iowa State hosting Texas Tech. Ty, massive injury questions. In this one, mm-hmm. we know Jazz Koontz is out for Iowa State. But on the other side, yeah. Yeah. Texas Tech. Bacho and Pop Isaacs missed last game. Maybe we'll see one or both this time. What are you thinking with this one? Yeah, Jazz Coons apparently doesn't matter. Uh, Iowa State 3-0 straight up without him in, in the game, like as as dogs. Uh, yeah, Matt, another spot I think is borderline insane but without injury considerations, six points. Bacho and Isaacs, you have to know if they're in. If they're out, I like Iowa State. If they're in, I like Texas Tech. They're hungry for a win. They're 0-3 in the Big 12, and they've played really well, I think, in Big 12 games so far. TCU yeah. by six on the road, they led in that game. KU by three at home, they led in that game. Oklahoma in overtime, shorthanded. I think they're on the cusp, even when they're not healthy, but I'm not stepping in front of Iowa State with a shorthanded team. I'm not a Texas Tech guy, but I'm with you, Kai. They've played pretty well in Big 12 play, and I think the line's a little high here. There's a couple of sixes floating out there. Um, I, I would advise scooping up some of that if you can find it. I just think that it's way too high. I mean, Iowa State's awesome. Like, we're not denying them. They played terrific. Awesome. They continue to shatter expectations. Um, but expecting them to beat Texas Tech by six, that seems like too rich for my blood. 
Yep, agreed. These teams played one of the ugliest games in the last year. That's right. Last yeah. year at at Hilton, it was like fifty one to forty seven on sixty eight possessions or something. It was just gruesome shooting. I think we could see something similar here. The one thing that's scaring me on the under, uh, I did take it small, but I'm scared that both teams turn the ball over. And you could get a lot of free baskets going the other way that kind of boost the offenses. If both have to play in the half court, I don't think they'll score, even if Isaacs is in there as kind of the the shooter spacer for Texas Tech. But uh, if you get too many transition buckets, that can that can really hurt the under. All right, one more Big 12 game here. Kansas hosting Oklahoma. Uh, the Jayhawks coming off two straight Big 12 road wins. We know how difficult that is. Um, Matchup-wise here, I have a little bit of a lean to the Jayhawks, Matthew. I'll justify it in a second, but I want to hear your opinion first. I thought the price is a little bit short on the opener. Um, got bet up to 10.5, but my gut was screaming Oklahoma. I just seemed like a little bit too high for, against Porter Moser. It just seems like he's a coach, why he, way they play, way they execute. Um, and they are fairly desperate here for a win. I, I would be shocked to see KU run OU out of the building, even though I think they're awesome. I think there is a very clear talent gap here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the price is, I think, almost reflected. Uh, that that part is reflected in the price, in my opinion. I think it should be close to like 12. Ooh, 12. Yeah. I mean, it feels high to me. Uh, you don't have a high, good, okay. This is a pretty good team to be catching double digits, e- even at fog. Um, right. But we are at fog, so I- I'm staying away. K's been nothing short of spectacular this year on, on both ends. It, it shouldn't really have an issue, Jim, with Oklahoma's floor spacing. I mean, they have mobile fours and fives that they just play all game. KJ Adams, Jan Wilson yeah, can stick with worried. anybody on the perimeter. So that that's really not an advantage for Oklahoma like it usually is. Uh, I, I do lean KU in a vacuum, but I can't lay 10 here. I just can't. Yeah, it's a it's a steep number, but I'm kind of with Matt. I thought the under was a little short and and backed it at nine and a half, ten and a half is a little dice here. Uh, but I, I probably would still lean Kansas way. Uh Kai, I think that mobile fours and fives is huge. Like Groves being able to spread the floor is usually a major advantage for Oklahoma and KJ Adams like does not worry about that. He's totally fine out there. Uh Oklahoma's defense, a Moser, a Moser team, they're all about like going under ball screens which ends up forcing a lot of isolation because you're not getting anything moving towards the rim. I think KU can score in isolation against this team. Uh, that's that's typically a great move against teams without offensive options, but McCuller, Dick, Wilson can score 1v1, uh, particularly whoever's not guarded by Jalen Hill. He's like the only wing athlete that, o- that Oklahoma has with size. I think the other two, whoever are not guarded by Hill, will have pretty strong days. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm definitely leading Kansas both early number and just matchup as I look at this game. Uh, only worry with Kansas, I wrote this down. I want to make sure I say it. Complacency back home after two yeah. road wins, you could see it being a little like the Oklahoma State game where they just kind of yep. <clears throat> hung around till the end That's and then were able to get right. the victory. Yep. So spot is a concern. All right, let's head west to Viejas, San Diego State hosting Nevada. This is a battle atop. The Mountain West here, guys. Big one for anybody with San Diego State futures. Raise his hand um, in the Mountain West. So hoping they can get a big victory against Nevada here. Matthew, do you think the show is there in full force? Do you think the Aztecs take care of business? Very torn in this game. Obviously, I'm the Nevada uh, expert of this show. Sure um, nine did feel high for this version of Nevada, which is big, long, tough and in some ways built to compete with this Aztec team. But on the other side of the coin, we just watched Oklahoma, I'm sorry, uh, Houston smash Cincinnati and a similar type of like, well, Cincinnati's built similar to Houston so they can withstand Houston. But if that's your strength and you're going strength. Uh Oh, Matthew. Oh, it's Matt said. I think George must've pulled the plug. He was sick of getting chirped at by Matthew. (laughs) So he pulled it. Uh, Kai, what do do you think of, of uh, Nevada at San Diego state? Well, San Diego State's on my shit list for being oh. un- unable to handle the shorthanded Wyoming team. Is Matt back? Not I'm yet. back. You guys froze. Oh, he He's back. You, you froze. froze. I froze. You're the freezer. Sweet. Me. <laughs> Who do you like? Who do you like real quick? Uh, Nevada, plus nine. A little okay, bit. thanks. Nine and a half. That rivers. Oh, um, like even more. Yeah, San Diego State not being able to handle Wyoming. <laughs> I, I, I'm missing five guys, and really just three, I suppose, with the other two guys being out for a while. That was on the road, but still allowing 75 points. That situation was terrible. Nevada's no pushover. Spread does seem high. I think it's worth noting, Jim, that you mentioned is for first place right now in the Mountain West. Kind of cool. Interesting little side note. My take is the over, though, guys. It's my best bet. Uh, At 138 at Bet Rivers, 
I think both teams play with pace offensively, and they've been a very, uh, very efficient this year. Usually you see a slower team in these Mountain West battles. At least one team likes to play slow offensively. Not today. Both teams like to run up and down. So hopefully the pace is pretty good. Hopefully the efficiency is high, and it goes over 138. Yep, I like that, Kai. Um, it does feel like, like high stakes. Nevada can hang around inside of uh, what Matt was saying. A little bit of a high number. The one caveat I'm going to give San Diego State a little credit for, Kai, is that apparently they had bad travel to get to Wyoming. Of course. Like, and, and that could have messed with the effort against, like you said, a mega shorthanded team that lost Wenzel mid-game. Like, that should have been a smash spot, and they just weren't able to get it done at high altitude. Uh, but I, I do still think they're the best team in the Mountain West, and they show it today. Maybe not a emphatic 20-point win, but a win – We'll see about the cover. I'm not betting this game, but hopefully there's a ton of points for Mr. McEwen's best bet. All right. Before we get Matt and I's best bets, let's do chat mob part two. Kai, hit us with some questions. All right. Aaron's asking about Central Michigan and Northern Illinois. Good luck finding information on Central Michigan's guards, Jim's, Arzuela missed last game. They were favored by, well, it's basically a pick right now, Bet Rivers. Yeah, and Boopy's been out forever. Boopy Miller. I don't know how you can back them without both those guys. They really lack shot creation, although they were competent uh, without them. But I would lean towards Northern Illinois if both those guys are out. Matthew in the MAC as well. Buffalo and Miami of Ohio. Buffalo is a a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Eh, It seems like Miami's defense is improving, Kai. I actually have hope for my Red Hawks, but uh, I – I still think Buffalo is the right play here. So Buffalo is not the MAC team that we saw of old, but it's a team that can beat the lower drags of the MAC when they have the athleticism edge. I think that's the case here. This is one of my gross high total unders. Ugh. From, I'm sorry, I want, okay, Andrew, Eastern Michigan, <laughs> Western Michigan. Jim, Western Michigan favored by two and a half in a game that I have no interest in personally. Yep, I will not bet Don't his bet side on an Eastern Michigan game probably for the rest of the season. I just, I don't think they're trustworthy or able to figure out when they're going to show up. Hey, they're playing another Michigan school. Maybe they'll show up. I don't Maybe. know. We'll find out. Uh, I do kind of like the under. It got bet down big yesterday, but then it's been bet back up today. Then the, the total mm. it got down from like mm. 149 to 145 and a half. It's back up to 147, 148 in some places. So now it's back to uh, 146. So the, I think the under money is winning. Well, I took the worst number of, of available. That's on tough. The under, so we'll that's see. tough. Matthew more Mac. Couple more Mac. No, just last last Mac. Just kidding. I'm a Mac guy. From Matt that's B. My, that's my lead. That's my playground. Matt B, thanks for the avatars. Very cool. Very fun. Yes. Oh, well like done, Matty B. Uh Ball State at Ohio. Ohio minus two right now at Bet Rivers. This one kind of hit me in the face. I like Ohio. Um, I haven't bet it yet. I feel like there's some weird movement. Wondering if I missed an injury or something with Ohio. Um, but I, I do think it's a good spot to back them 0-2 in league play. Um, I know Ball State's been my baby all year, but they were lucky when that Acker game. I was lucky to cover that game. Just a foul fest down the stretch. It was a complete gross affair. I think Castaneda probably plays in some uh, plays a little bit tonight. Different. Game. Oh, sorry. He plays for Akron. You're Who talking is... Ball State and Ohio. Oh, right. They just played Akron. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll talk about Akron later. I like Ohio tonight. Minus two. That's all I have. All right. In the Valley for Matthew. Belmont and Valpo, Jim. Valpo is a plus five home dog. I lean towards Valpo. I saw they're one of the worst ATS teams in the country. I said, no thanks, Valpo. What do you think? Yeah, I think we're just having a hard time quantifying how bad Bad they are. I I backed them against Drake to start league play, and they covered. And I like felt so lucky for winning that I have not gone back to the well. It's like I I don't I don't think it's a team I'm really going to trust. I do kind of like the over though. I think there's going to be possessions up and down this one. Belmont's bringing that. Belmont and Murray really are bringing that more up tempo style to uh, to this league. Matt, your favorite team in the entire world, the South Carolina Gamecocks, are on the road at Kentucky, and they're catching twenty points. <laughs> what do you think? Did you get? Did you guys laugh when I bet South Carolina last game? I was like, I put that bet yes. into the shake. Kai probably laughed at me. And Tennessee was about like twenty to two within five minutes. Um, I do like South Carolina here tonight. Why is Kentucky taking money? I don't understand. I know South Carolina got boat raced by Tennessee. That's Tennessee. Tennessee and Kentucky are like. Completely different chasms right now. Um, however, I did read some quotes that Paris questioned the effort and buy-in of some of his players. Whenever I read stuff like that, I always kind of run for the hills. So I didn't play it. I think South Carolina's a winning bet tonight. That's all I'll say. Yeah. yeah. Kentucky can't cover a number, but Kentucky. South Carolina is winning. bad. Yeah. I mean, they uh, did they cover Louisville? 
Uh, we, we backdoored the plus 23 and a half. Yeah, plus 23. plus 23. So is, yeah, is yeah. South Carolina three points better than Louisville? Yes, they are. The answer is yes, they are better than Louisville. I honestly yes. don't know, <laughs> don't know that, that. the answer to that question. Uh, Jim, St. John's, Butler, Big East matchup, minus three and a half, St. John's. I have a hard time figuring out St. John's. Uh, really impressive effort last time out. I, I thought that was uh, you know tip of the cap type of type of stuff from them. Butler also, though, effort has waxed and waned this year. Like you can watch some of their games and it's like they're not engaged. Eric Hunter's yep. been particularly poor at point guard. That can be against St. John's pressure. Terrible. So, yeah, Matt, I, I know you're angry about backing Butler a lot this year. Uh, any thoughts? Any extra thoughts? No, I was going to back Butler and just completely passed. And I, I gave them a pretty serious downgrade in my ratings. I haven't been that impressed. They're The problem is that they're trying to bring all these new pieces together at the wrong time. So it's just adding another problem to an already, you know, faulty car, I guess. They can't beat good teams. No. I know they beat K State, but they, they have a, yeah, so is K State a good team? They have maybe, a real maybe quitting. that's the one outlier result for both teams, man. Yeah. Let's do that. Maybe Texas real... defense sucks. Baylor's defense sucks. Both are possible. They have possible. a quitting Kinda. issue. They have a quitting issue. They quit during games. If they get down early, they Bigger. quit. There's no hope of coming back. I think that's their issue. Maybe that's coaching. I like that motto. I don't know. Maybe it's attitude. Uh, something. Temple at Tulsa. Matthew Temple is taking money. They are minus four on the road. Temple is my lean. I, I don't know. Temple kind of has eluded me all season, but this this line feels very low to me. I lean Temple as well. Yeah, they've been Jim, kind of whack a mole. But in the A10, VCU is on the road against Loyola, minus three and a half. VCU and our Chicago A10 team. Uh, who do you like? I think Loyola is terrible. They are really, really bad. Um, They've played some shorthanded teams and still had bad efforts. I think some of their best efforts have been total aberrational shooting performances. Like they blew out Stanford because they shot the lights out. They still turn the ball over like crazy. That can be a problem against VCU athletic defense. That would be Rams or nothing for me. Oh, they blew out Clemson. Sorry. I have to correct you because I had a losing ticket. (laughs) I'm sorry. That's true. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, The Stanford game. Yeah. I think Loyola is in shambles. I like VCU as well. Finally, Matthew, Fresno State at San Jose State. The uh, Spartans are minus three. Any thoughts? I can't have San Jose State favored in a conference game against one of the better teams. Just can't do it. But uh, you think Fresno is one of the better teams? I think they're a middle of the road team. Yeah, I do. Well, that's um, different. Who are they better than in the league? Uh, who's a host, who's in the league? They're better than better than uh, Air Force. Are they better? Yeah, than, they are. Are they better they're, than Wyoming right now? Maybe. Yes. Okay, fine. Yeah, Fresno. They, say, San Jose State should not be fared by many slash any team in the Mountain West, no matter where they're playing. And I love San Jose State, and I love Tim Miles. I just can't justify a minus three. I think this is a bad line. I would take Fresno. I would. I think they're like as good as each other, and the line makes sense, personally. Yeah, Fair. Yeah. I think it's a little bit uh, rich. Somebody asked- if they theorized I, liked, I would like the under. This uh, It's been bet up a little bit, and it was actually a gross over i kind of liked i didn't bet it i didn't get get the number in but i hate fresno why don't you defend fresno fresno stinks i know cur- i was very shocked that you if were you're defending. curious matt fresno is the second worst team for ken palm right ahead of and right now in the league yes. God, i don't know 151 man they are pretty bad okay they're yeah. they're poor yeah uh but hey now they're going to cover now that we bash don't back san jose state i don't think it's a good bet i think it's a bad yeah. bet but what do i know all right chat mob part two that concludes us jim time for best bets which i believe goes to matt Yep, Matthew, lead us off with your best bet. Uh, Dayton, first half, minus four. I was going to take full game. I think it was sitting at seven and a hook on Bet Rivers last time I checked. I played full game, but I'm endorsing first half as my... Um, luck has been atrocious for my own bets this season. So all that is to say, please hammer Dayton, first half, minus four. I think they're just playing really well. At, right now, they've kind of figured out what they have with who they have. And uh, Fordham has shown cracks after a pretty awesome non-conference. So I just think they dominate the paint today. It's kind of a tricky yeah. spot going to Rose Hill, Jim, but um, I, I just think they dominate the paint. The, like this Dayton team has dropped like last year. It had some weird losses. I think they lost at Fordham last year. I think they did up. too. Yep. Uh, no, they lost at LaSalle. La, la, uh, that was the mystifying one last two years year. Ago. LaSalle. But yeah. Okay. Um, we'll see. It's a, it should be a good, uh, a good spot for Fordham. I don't know. Good, good uh, luck, Matthew. I lean Dayton as well, Matt. For two Thank years. you. They're just better. In terms of like buy low from league or non-league play and sell high from non-league play, I think Dayton's the right side. But... Dayton's the right side. Uh, uh, Kai, or sorry, recap me. your best bet. San Diego State over 138 is my best bet. Go points, Jim. Points, yeah. 
Uh, Villanova and DePaul, a local game here just in the South Loop. I'm not going to attend, but I'm taking the under 141. Uh, Villanova, I think, just completely controls the tempo, keeps this game in the half court. Uh, DePaul actually defends the three pretty well. That's like the risk with Villanova is that you just get hyper-efficient shooting. DePaul run them off the line, force them to score inside the arc more. Uh, so I think between a little bit of slowdown and hopefully not a supernova type offensive performance, we get an under game here, 141. Feel decent about that one. All right, that wraps it up for today. Good luck to Mr. Ganji in the chat and his nuclear net worth bomb on North Carolina. Goodness gracious. I might have to trail it. Uh, there you go. Good I might luck, have to man. trail him. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Twin River Casino for letting him get $40,000 down on a game. That's great. Yeah, yeah more yeah. books should be like that. Not not, uh, <laughs> not typical. But all right, thank you to the chat mob for sending in the questions, for hanging out. We always appreciate that. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. Maybe not. Uh, actually, it's a pretty awesome slate tomorrow. So we'll, we'll be good slate. It'll be it'll be it'll be a long show. Whoever's in charge will. Uh, but that's it. That's it for Tuesday. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Enjoy the games tonight.